Sega Genesis. Durable. Strong. 16-bit. Versus the PlayStation 2. Also strong. Also durable. Kicks and ass. 64 bits. Will last as long as you abuse it. With your hardcore gaming experience. Which system will win the battle royale in the 21st century of gaming? And no, I don't mean I'm gonna slam these two into each other. That's just that's just brutal. Barbaric. The Sega Genesis, or as you probably know it, or name it as, in the other parts of the world is the Mega Drive, was manufactured by Sega, released in, on October 29th, 1988 in Japan, August 14th, 1989 in North America, and November 30th, 1990 in the PAL region. Discontinued 1997 worldwide by Sega, and in North America discontinued 1999 by Majesco. It sold over 37.4 million units to over 41.9 million units. And its best-selling game, Sonic the Hedgehog. Now that looks awesome. The PlayStation 2 was released in on March 4th, 2000 worldwide, manufactured by Sony, and it sold 153.6 million units combined as of November 21st, 2011. Finally, on January 4th, 2013, the PlayStation 2 got discontinued. The media output is DVDs and CDs, as well as many other things. And its best-selling game is Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. However, I do not own that game, because I hate the Grand Theft Auto games. But, uh... I will, however... put in probably my favorite game on the list. Yeah. Take NHL 99 out of there. And put in the best racing game of all time. Gran Turismo 4. By the way, these are very noisy. Just so, just saying. Now I'm going to compare the system design for both systems. Now I just want to say, the Sega Genesis, at least this, this Model 1, is awesome. Okay, it's got great lines, it's really smooth. And it comes in the Ford Model T color. See, that's how I like my video game systems. It's like the rule on the color choice from the old Ford Model T. You can have it in any color you want, just as long as it's black. And I abide by that rule. Cool vents here that they should have shot out flames from there. Boldly says, well, almost boldly says 16 bit. And, uh,. back of it's nothing special but here's my favorite part about the system at least the model one so of course you have your reset button on and off switch but you have a headphone jack and a volume control slider now I was what no I was actually not watching but I was reading a a text review from the video game critic on his website um, that insulted the headphone jack saying, did anyone ever use that thing? Well, video game critic, yes I did. And I still do to this day. 
but I really like it. It, it. I mean, it does look like a new piece of technology if you have it on your desk or something, if you keep it in good condition. Because this Sega Genesis, minus all the fingerprints I have and the dust, it's in pretty much immaculate condition. I mean, this, this could win in a landslide when it comes to system design. I know with the PlayStation 2, there's the system design, there's really nothing that stands out, you know. Um, yeah, they do incorporate ridges, so I guess you can grip the system better if you're, if you're holding it like this. Why would you ever want to hold it like that? You'll drop it. And by the way, this is also the first model PlayStation 2. The, let's see, um, hang on a sec. Let's see, come on. Well, I can't see that, but it's the SCPH 30001. That is the model number. Wait, I forgot my flashlight. I forgot my trusty flashlight. Ah, all right, so yeah, there it is. SCPH thirty thousand one. There we go. Three best words in technology made in Japan. I know you can't see that, and I apologize. My camera's really crappy. It's one of those cheap ones you buy for 20 bucks. Alright, so yeah, there's really nothing special about the system. It's it's big and clunky, but it is durable. Well, you can stand it up on end, like I said in my PlayStation 2 review. You can rotate the PlayStation logo 90 degrees while you're standing it up. So well, I gotta give this one to the Sega Genesis because the system design is just so awesome. Alright, now I'm gonna talk about the controllers. I'm gonna start with the Sega Genesis controller, the three button model. Yeah, th I mean, holding this and playing a game, it feels great. Now, I know that James Rolfe had criticized the Sega Genesis controller compared to the Super Nintendo controller, which I can actually uh, somewhat mimic. Hang on a sec. Like in a racing game on the PlayStation 2 controller, I can hold down X, I can hold down X to drive, and hold on to the rest of my thumb on square to break. You know, it, it does help that the buttons are at an angle, but on the Genesis, you know, they are in a straight line, And but it's not much of a big leap for your thumb. Yeah, I could do this no problem. I may hit B a few times, but, you know, that's still a great controller. I mean, it melts into your hands, feels really nice. Uh, I don't like the six button controller as much, but the D-pad, I love the D-pad and the Genesis controller because it has that plastic piece in between that you can pull off moves like in Street Fighter 2, you can do like a spin kick and stuff like that. It's really awesome. Now let's go to the PlayStation 2 controller. Alright. Uh, the PlayStation 2 controller, there's really no other version of it. Well, there is a six-button version, like for fighting games, like they released a Street Fighter Edition controller that looks nothing like this. But I love the PlayStation 2 controller. It's my favorite controller of all time. I mean, it's so ergonomic. You have palm rests right here, the handles, the analog sticks are so responsive. The D-pad, yeah, it's a little, little crappy, but that's okay. It's better than the Xbox 360 D-pad. Start and select buttons, your analog control button. And the buttons, the face buttons, they're all analog instead of digital. So it's pressure sensitive. Like in a racing game, you lightly tap, you like, you like, you go real slow on pressing the X button. You slowly build up speed on your car, but if you just like slam on the the X button, you'll just floor it. The trigger buttons here, it's just great. 
Yeah, this was modeled after the Super Nintendo controller, and uh, seeing that the PlayStation 2 is backwards compatible with the PlayStation 1, it's pretty much a, a modern PlayStation 1. It also worked with this PlayStation 1 controller, same, but these are digital buttons, digital D-pad, everything's digital, you know. But uh, when it comes to controllers, I gotta give this one to the PlayStation 2. It's right here in the analog sticks. They should have created an analog version for the Sega Genesis, so you could have more responsive controls, and you can choose, like if like if you're playing a game, like you don't want to move too fast, moving something, you just want to go real slow because this is digital. It just doesn't work like that. So I'm gonna give this one to the PlayStation 2 controller, hands down. Oh, I need some coffee.